Hi, I'm Jeffrey Lunn. Welcome to today's lecture. Uh, today we're going to be covering camera modes and I think you're going to find that the modes aren't just marketing hype to get you to buy this or that camera model. They are very, very useful. Each one does several different things and if you were to accomplish those same uh, effects uh, using manual, it'd be pretty difficult to do. Some of the modes do as many as seven adjustments to make sure that the camera is optimized for that particular subject. So hang in there and let's uh, get started. So what are camera modes? Well, modes and scene settings are valuable shortcuts and they are somewhat like an automatic transmission in a car. You do the driving once the gear selector is in D and that's a lot of what we do with these new automatic digital cameras. Uh, now the modes change how the cameras react to the various light scenes that we're presented with but mainly uh, these automatic functions in the modes are helping us to focus. They're doing automatic focus so you just press down on the shutter and the camera focuses for you and it does it in about a tenth of a second which is very fast. Uh, the camera in these various modes chooses the white balance and that is the camera deciding what the light source is. It takes a lot of information into consideration, mainly what it sees as flesh tones or if there's any true white in the scene and it's going to make its best guess and it's usually pretty close. Now here's a real important thing, the exposure. Basically it sets the f-stop which is the aperture, that's the hole that lets light in and the shutter speed, that's the time that light is allowed to pass through the lens. Uh, the modes also vary the flash output. Uh, it turns it on, it turns it off. The intensity of the flash is different in different modes. And then the ISO setting. In most of our modes uh, and our camera default is probably in auto ISO. But uh, we will probably get away from that because you want to be able to control your ISO. And that's like the film speed in a film camera. It's the sensor sensitivity. It's in other words like a volume control on a radio. It, it makes the device more sensitive uh, to the environment and what it's being presented with. Now these modes and scene settings may change as many as seven different settings to improve a photo. Uh, on earlier DSLRs on the left you're going to have some mode settings, not very many, and they're going to be on your mode wheel which is on the top of your camera. New DSLRs have a few mode settings but they also have a setting that is called the scene setting or SCN and that opens up uh, a whole bunch of new and more numerous modes than would fit on the mode dial. Now this will take you to a scene mode LCD display and the one that's being shown on the very right that's from a Lumix camera and it has many 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 modes and so every model camera has the modes or scene settings in a different location uh, and some cameras have them in two places but mainly on your mode dial you will see either on the left many uh, choices but there but no scene setting and on the right too many choices that will appear on the mode dial a much more um, advanced and modern approach. If your camera has a scene setting on the mode wheel it means that your camera has too many s scenes to fit on the mode wheel and that's a good thing because the scene setting is your gateway to a host of helpful features this is one display of what it looks like on a Lumix camera and that actually is just one page of many pages of mode settings. Uh, the Canon Rebel Ti has eight modes on the external dial and no scene settings. That's what we see in the upper left. 
there are a lot of those cameras still in circulation. The Nikon 5200 has six modes on the external dial and another 15 in the scene settings. Uh, Canon was a little late to the party on the scene setting internal menus. Uh, Lumix was the first and Nikon came a little later. Uh, the Canon G15 has five modes on the external dial and 12 scene settings inside, and, and the Sony CyberShot has four external mode settings and then 12 in the internal scene settings. Uh, Lumix cameras offer the most numerous and easily acceptable modes in their scene setting. There's just so many on Lumix cameras. They're really terrific, too. So expensive top-end cameras have the fewest modes and they are most difficult to use. Many professional photographers carry a simple camera, a point-and-shoot camera for quick access to simple shooting modes. Find your mode selector and choose Auto because that's where we're going to start. The Canon uh, mode wheel is up on the left and the Nikon is in the middle and the Lumix is on the right. Uh, typically, the DSLR companies have gone to a green icon for the auto function. The good thing about auto is that it handles all of the technical functions, leaving us to concentrate on the following aspects. The camera angle, the composition, the lighting of the subject, and choosing the focal length. In other words, do we want to zoom in or zoom out? How do we crop the image? Uh, we do that by choosing a different focal length. There is no shame in using auto mode if the light is very good. This is soft side light from a large window. Your camera will do very well in this light. And that's why it's so important for us to learn how to recognize when the light is good because that would free us to go back to auto or choose the appropriate mode or exposure setting to adapt to soft light or hard light. Open shade is the kind of soft light you want for portraits. This photo was taken in the shade of a building. There's no direct sun. The model, Velzo Brown, who was a working jazz musician until age 101, uh, she is standing in front of her log cabin house and the sun is on the other side of the house so the direct sunlight is blocked by the house she's being lit by open shade that's clouds light bouncing off of trees light bouncing off of the sky and so she has no harsh shadows very soft lighting moving your subject into open shade only takes a minute but it makes a dramatic difference. Here's my wife in photo one. She's standing in the sun. You see that spot of light in the far left photo. I just asked her to move one step to the right and then she moves into the shade and you can see the improvement of the lighting. And that is another example of open shade. Uh, a big rule is, is that high contrast is bad especially for people photos. So don't take photos of people in harsh direct sunlight. They're going to be squinting and they're going to get this raccoon eyes uh, example that we have here with the surfer. The first choice is to move them into open shade. These are some shots I took of some grandkids I have and they are in the Felton covered bridge. That was a few years ago. Uh, this was my camera set on auto. It was actually for a clothing catalog and it's just soft side light. There's no direct light hitting them. I depend on open shade when I shoot photojournalism assignments too. Uh, even when I'm shooting, doing street shooting for magazines, I'll move subjects into the shade like this shot taken for a magazine cover that I did in Israel. Use large windows as a lighting source. Make sure your flash is disabled. The window does not appear in this window light portrait. The photographer, that's me, has my shoulder to the window and then my subject has her shoulder to the window. So it's a window lit portrait, but the window is not in the photograph. Here's a newborn near a north facing window at the hospital and this is another example of using soft window light. It's a nice directional light with no harsh shadows. You can't go wrong with this kind of lighting. 
a reflector can provide additional fill lighting. In this case, it's soft, uh, natural window light with a reflector. The camera's in the auto mode, and it just looks like a studio portrait. It's very, very easy to do. You can see the position of the model. Compare the lighting in these shots. The best result comes from indirect sunlight. The photo in the upper right is window light, but it's the wrong kind of window light because it's direct sunlight. The one in the left is the soft north-facing window. No harsh shadows. If you don't learn anything else except how to shoot a window light portrait in this class, it will have been worthwhile. This was taken in auto mode with soft side lighting. A tripod is often needed in this situation because the shutter speed will be about an eighth or maybe even a quarter of a second. It just depends on how bright it is on that particular day and how the window faces. It's absolutely essential that all of you are able to immediately distinguish between hard and soft light. Uh, uh, this is my wife, direct bright sunlight. It's hard light on the left. And when I move her into open shade, uh, the, the sky is really at my back. She has a building to her back. I call that frontal open shade. That's soft light. And I, I've also diffused the light. Uh, I've, she was out in the sun and I used a diffuser on the far right to create the soft side light. It's also very soft light. You can see the difference in the shadows on the subject. When you look closely, you can see that harsh direct sunlight is bad for people pictures and this is why. There's no catch light in the eyes so people are squinting to protect their eyes from the damage uh, that high UV output can do. So there's no there's no reflection in their eyes. The, you have deep wrinkles on the face. The subject is squinting. There's a painfully forced smile. Their face lowers in order to create that shadow over the eyes. It's just an amateur looking shot. We're just not going to do any of those in this class. Uh, there's a shot on the right. I just moved my wife into the shade. She's able to open up her eyes and we see a pleasing catch light which is actually just a reflection of me in her eyes uh, and I've got some light colored pants on. You can see that that's all reflected in her eyes. It's kind of a, a very glossy wet surface on her eyes and that is very good for portraiture. Of course it reduces her wrinkles, she's able to open her eyes all the way, she's able to relax her, her expression, her face angle is normal. It's just a professional result. If you don't have any north facing windows you can soften the light from a south facing window by taping up a five dollar shower curtain liner and this is a very very good technique for getting indoor portraits with a, a window that would normally just be too, too harsh. How about outdoors? How do you control sunlight there? Well, you can use a simple diffuser to soften the sunlight, and that makes a big improvement. You can see without the diffuser, again, very hard light. And with a diffuser, uh, the, it, it suddenly becomes soft light. And the subject is looking so much more relaxed and all of the um, the highlights on his nose are evened out. In this approach we backlit the subject with the sun and used a reflector to light his face and chest. This is especially good when you're photographing people with hats or, or dark-haired subjects. Uh, this before and after comparison shows the dramatic improvement provided by a reflector.